Hey, what's good, self-direct investors? I hope you're all doing great, and I want to welcome you back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jordan. I'm the mind behind Make More Capital, and today I'm coming at you with a special Thursday midweek update because there's tons of developments in the cannabis space, so it'll help ease the load on Sunday, and then this way I can give you some more real-time updates. So before we jump in, if you enjoy this video or you learned something, please just leave a like on it as it really helps out my channel. And then, of course, if you want to learn how to take advantage of this generational investment opportunity, make sure you subscribe below so that you don't miss any future videos, and there's plenty of content for you to come back, rewatch, and educate yourself with so that you can get caught up to speed. Now, before we jump into Verano's holdings, which Verano has recently become one of the top tier MSOs based on a lot of acquisitions that they've done recently. Um, I just want to point out that please see this channel as an educational news source that you wouldn't find elsewhere on, on mainstream TV or anything like that because I know a lot of channels will recommend the best companies to buy at which time and why. And as someone that's self-taught, I still don't necessarily feel comfortable doing that. And what I want to essentially do, there's this quote, I just want to bring it up. Give a man a fish and he will be hungry again tomorrow. Teach a man to fish and he will be richer all his life. So I, I hope you can tell kind of my philosophy is more playing the long game. So I just want to really help you think big picture about this industry and focus on all of the positives that have been happening over time that reiterate why this is such a great long-term investment opportunity. And I think everything I'm highlighting does show that it is the next great American growth story. But for people that want short-term stock picks, I apologize, I just don't know how to do that yet. So um, anyway, and I mean, I don't think I plan on doing that. Anyways, let's jump in and go through Verano's holdings um, for their full year 2020 results. Now, one interesting thing is that they did not report for Q4 on here. I don't know why. It's definitely one of the weirder um, financial statements that I've had to go through, but nonetheless, they did manage 2020 revenue of 355 million, growth of approximately 200%, uh, gross profit margins of 63% for a full year 2020. They had a 2020 net income of 245 million and a 2020 adjusted EBITDA of 170 million, giving them a 48% uh, margin in EBITDA profitability there. So. Now, this financial information covers uh, their operations from year-end December 30th, 31st, 2021, and the financial information includes herein uh, is reported on a pro forma consolidated basis, which from my understanding, that just means that a lot of the purchases that they made have not actually been solidified or gone through yet. So this is accounting for what will become their operations after these purchases go through, right? So assuming the completion of the business combination of Verano Holdings, Majesta Minerals, Alternative Medical Enterprises, Plants of Ruskin LLC, RVC 360 LLC, and affiliated companies, uh, collectively AltMed, which is one of their main big purchases, uh, which was completed February 11, 2021. And then tw with 2019 comparative information on the same pro forma consolidated basis and without taking into account any anticipated synergies, uh, or other adjustments. So this is such a complicated statement. I still, I really don't, I mean, I just, I do not own any shares in Verano and I do not plan to own them because I will only invest in companies that I feel I understand. And right there, I, I just don't get it yet. Now, obviously I'm gonna keep educating myself and hopefully I will be able to understand that. But basically what that means is that they've bought a lot of companies. So this revenue does not come from their sole operations that they've created, but from what will uh, end up closing uh, in their deal. So their 2020 revenue increased 196% year over year to 355 million. Their gross profit for full year of 2020 on an unadjusted basis and not included the impact of biological assets was 224 million or 63% of revenue compared to 51 million or 43% of revenue in 2019. So the growth uh, figures are quite healthy year over year. 2020 SG&A expenses was 85 million or 24% of revenue compared to 56 million or 46% of revenue in 2019. Their net income in 2020, including the impact of biological assets, was 245 million compared to 10 million uh, in 2019. So that is quite uh, an increase in net income, which is nice to see. Their 2020 EBITDA on an adjusted basis was 153 million or 43% of revenues, and adjusted EBITDA was 170 million in 2020, which translates to a 48% margin. And their cash flow from operations in 2020 was 151 million. Their 2020 free cash flow was 53 million. So confusing. Now, from my understanding, you should not be able to account pro pharma as your actual revenue. So for me right now, this, I would just not buy Verano. But again, I'm not telling you what to do. I want to you know, educate you and show you my thinking so that you can weigh it against the way you, you know, look at companies, uh, measure the entire industry overall and can make better uh, investment decisions on your own, right? So just pointing that out though, it's like, 
a lot of these numbers, I mean, anyways, let's, I'll just keep going. I'll, I'll stop talking now. Throughout 2020 and 2021 year to date on a pro forma basis, which includes the impact of Altmed, the company opened 36 dispensaries. The company has completed or is in the process of completing expansion of seven active cultivation facilities in addition to the build out of an eighth in Massachusetts. Now, February 17th, 2021, the company commenced trading on the CSE following the completion of a reverse takeover transaction with Majesta. Concurrent with the completion of the RTO, the company completed the acquisition of Altmed. Subsequent going to going public the company has announced and or closed eight accretive acquisitions strengthening its presence in arizona illinois pennsylvania and ohio pending customary closing requirements the company would add 17 dispensaries 14 active and three planned and approximately 20,000 square feet in cultivation capacity company has a total active footprint of 73 retail stores uh, and 770,000 square feet of cultivation store square facility, includes pending acquisitions and construction in progress. And on March 11, 2021, Verano completed a private placement bought deal financing, raising gross proceeds of $100 million. Special warrants were sold at the offering price of $28.50, and the company received approval to uh, list on the over-the-counter market, trading under the symbol VRNOF, which gives U.S. investors direct access to Verano. So, 2020 was a very productive year as a lot of, you know, purchasing allowed them to to become a tier one MSO compared to where they had been before. Uh, while the global community faced unprecedented challenges, we were encouraged to see our industry embraced for its ability to positively impact health and wellness while creating countless jobs and generating substantial tax revenue at a time that many other businesses could not. And this does not stand for just Verano. This is the entire cannabis industry in general. As cannabis investors, you got to be very proud of how this industry has has been resilient throughout this past year. Now, our 2020 results in combination with progress made year-to-date in 2021 are testament to our team's proven ability to execute on our focus growth strategy both efficiently and profitably, including accretive M&A activity to fortify our presence in core markets, as well as material organic expansion across our national footprint at the retail level and in cultivation and production capacity. I'm tremendously proud of what Verano's team has accomplished to date, and I anticipate that we'll continue to deliver shareholder value through 2021. Uh, This comes from George Arcos, the co-founder and CEO of Verano. So as of right now, their balance sheet, they are sitting on assets on a pro forma consolidated basis. So again, this doesn't actually mean that these are their assets. It could be their assets once the deal is finalized and closed. Now, there's no reason that they won't be finalized and closed, but just the fact that they present it as as fact is just a bit sketchy to me. But again, you know, what do I know? I'm just a guy that's learning and, and trying to help everyone understand this industry uh, as, as well. Now, they're, but that, that being said, their current assets were 321 million, including cash and cash equivalents of 31 million. The company had working capital of 178 million and total debt of 38 million. So they are quite healthy when you look at their current ratio, which would be taking their assets and dividing it by liabilities. Now, let's jump through um, their numbers. Now, yeah, this is the weird thing, though. Where are your Q4 earnings? I don't get it. So that's that's a flag right there for me anyways. Just pointing that out, though. Um, so if we look at their audited consolidated statement of operations for 12 months ended, uh, it just shows us 2019 to 2020. So we're unable to see what they did on Q4. But also main thing to point out is that Verano was a private company beforehand, and they're as they've IPO'd on the CSE and they plan to IPO on the OTC, they are going from private to public. So I suppose that's why some of their past numbers aren't audited and broken down in detail. That's just my assumption, but that's that's what I wanted to point out. So from 2019 to 2020, they increased revenue from 119 million to 354 million, with gross profit increasing from 51 million to 223. Now, I think this is a mistake here. I just don't get this, but or maybe this is because they picked up profits from uh, their m- recent mergers and acquisitions. Mind you, it says here their gross profit is $408 million, which is more than their revenue, um, up from 86 So just pointing that out, I don't. that's very confusing. I don't get it, so I wanted to let you all know that that's something that I notice is a bit strange. Um, but to go through the rest of it, they did have a positive operating income, r- increasing it from $32 million to $334 million. And, and they did manage to increase their net income from $9.9 million to $244 million. So again, in terms of finances, it looks like they're moving towards, like, they're profitable and things look quite good for them. Mind you, again, I just, as, as a company going from private to public, Potential, lots of potential here. Mind you, I just I will not be investing in them. Cash uh, from 2019 to 2020, uh, they've got 13 million up to 30 million, um, and their total assets did increase from 288 million to 668 million, likely from a lot of their purchasing. Um, now, again, here there's no there's no breakdown of their long term liabilities. Um, they, they do seem to have quite 
a small amount of goodwill compared to um, what you might expect from the amount of purchasing they've been doing. Mind you, uh, it, it's nice to see that it's not too heavy. And if we do look at their total assets compared to their long-term liabilities, quite a big difference there, which is nice. Now, their net income for this uh, for this year, EBITDA profitability-wise, did increase from 33 million to 345 million. Um, and then after with net impact of biological assets. So I imagine this is, or not imagine, I, I think this is from acquiring a lot of assets that from their purchases, which increased their profitability to from 20 to uh, 20 million to 170 million. So that's it for their uh, financial statement. So again, I'd like to see more work with what's actually made in Q4, uh, how they're growing quarter over quarter. But as again, a company that's going from public to private, uh, it does provide a good snapshot on what to expect going forward. Now, they also have this investor presentation, which I'll leave below so that you can grab that. But I just wanted to go through this unrelated to Verano, just to show you the key states to focus on. So if you're considering which companies to invest in, it's wise to try and get build a position in companies that have a large footprint in these core states, because these are the ones that at least have the, um, you know, the political setup or have the momentum already in motion for legal adult use market or plans for one in the near future. So if we look at Illinois, the adult use, they have legal adult and medical markets, population of 12.7 million, 150,000 medical patients, which is just 1.2% of the population. Imagine once we get more people off of opioids and you know consuming cannabis for medicine, that has so much room to climb. Um, and then 669 million adult use sales in its first year, total market expected to grow from 1.3 billion combined with adult use and medical sales to 1.8 billion. So that is why Illinois is kind of the, the the top state to be in right now because they have the population, they have the adult use, um, and they have the adult use sales growth, uh, and it's heading in a strong trend upwards. Now, Florida Overview, they only have medical legal. They do not have adult use yet, and their population is 21.5 million. So this will be a very big market once that eventually does change over to legalizing adult use. Mind you, they don't have it right now. So that's why the biggest play for Florida if you want to get in there, is TrueLeaf, because TrueLeaf has over 50% market share. Um, and as they have 570, or 457,000 medical patients, uh, TrueLeaf has, again, at least uh, you know half of that because they have the 51% market share. And this is just 2.1% of the penetration. So total market expected to grow from 970 million, just medical, to 2.56 billion. Um, and I believe this would just be for medical. So once they actually open adult use, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I'm just making that assumption. So I, I shouldn't even say that. Just just wanting to point that out though. Now, Arizona overview, uh, their market, adult use and medical. They just legalized as of January 22nd, adult use sales flipped the switch overnight. And that makes their medical market of 230 million patients increased to a population of 7.3 million. However, many adults are in Arizona, maybe 6 million, uh, maybe 5.5 million. Regardless, it's a lot more than medical patients. And their adult use program, again, active as of January 2021, uh, sorry, 295,000 medical patients, which is 4% of the penetration, but their total market is expected to grow from 1 billion to 1.81 billion by 2026. And then we have New Jersey uh, adult use and medical markets. Now they are not they have not uh, allowed adult use sales to start yet. However, that is planned for uh, later in 2021 or 2022, but they have a population of 8.9 million. And again, very few uh, New Jerseyans have actually opted into the medical uh, system yet. So still just nine, 99,000 medical patients, 1.1% penetration, and total market is expected to grow from 178 million to 100 and I'm going to assume that's 1.84 billion. They forgot to be there, but that is what it would grow to. And adult use signed into legislation in February 2021. So although adult use has been signed in, does not mean that uh, sales have started yet, which they won't. It's going to take some time. And then Pennsylvania, uh, another one of the key markets, they have a medical market of 12.8, or they have a medical market only, no adult use, uh, 12.8 million people in Pennsylvania with a pet medical patient count of 380,000, um, and so far penetration of just 3%. So again, think of when we can change the narrative and make cannabis more acceptable, how many more patients or how many more people will be willing to try cannabis as a medical alternative for pain, uh, stress, uh, inflammation, all these things that you know they're using opioids for currently. And the total market is expected to grow from 545 million to 1.3 billion. Um, and Pennsylvania, as I, as I mentioned in yesterday's video, their governor is calling for legalizing adult use. So there's hope that this one will come sooner than later. And again, uh, population matters when you're looking at the states to invest in. And so the last two markets, we have Ohio. Uh, they have a medical market only, no adult use yet. Another 
decent sized population, 11.7 million, with 160 medical patients and just 1.4% of the penetration. Total market is expected to grow from 217.6 million to 1.37 billion by 2026. Again, these are just estimates as well. And Maryland, again, medical market only, not legal for adult use. Uh, they have a population of 6.1 million people and just 2% penetration, meaning 123 registered medical patients uh, with so much potential there. And total market expected to grow from 449 million in 2022, 1.39 billion in 2026. And this is again with estimate, or this includes estimates for just medical, not with adult use. So uh, scrolling through now, these are key developing states, states that I guess aren't as expected, aren't expected to grow as quickly or aren't as lenient in their laws. Uh, and these include Massachusetts, Nevada, Michigan, and Arkansas. So Massachusetts overview, adult use and medical market uh, with a 6.9 million population with just 1.4% penetration of the uh, with 100,000 medical patients. The total market is expected to grow from 917 million 2020 in 2022, 1.78 billion in 2026. Again, this is an estimate. And then we have Nevada, which does have adult use and medical markets, but again, much smaller population. So the population does matter in just how quickly you can see growth um, in revenues, uh, not only for the state, but also for the companies inside that state. So uh, the uh, the Mind you, look at how tiny this population is. Uh, just 0.3% penetration, 9.8 registered medical patients. That's it in Nevada. Mind you, um, the total market expected to grow from 808 million. So see how much sales come from adult use with so few medical patients registered to 1.68 billion by 2026. Um, and then we see Michigan adult use and medical markets. It appears Michigan has actually, in 2020, they just passed legislation that's going to allow a lot more uh, dispensaries to open and licenses to be given out, which is great um, for any investors and companies in Michigan. Uh, they And again, so just 2.5% penetration with 247,000 medical patients registered so far. And this market is expected to grow from 985 million from in 2020 to 1.69 billion in 2026. And then lastly, Arkansas only has a medical market, 3 million people with 2.2% penetration and 66, uh, 66.6 thousand medical patients registered. This market expected to grow from 129 million to 720 million. And then lastly, other developing states, um, well, California it just shows their positions in there. So I wanted to walk you through that though. So if you do want to see growth in the next few years, just my view is that companies in these states with, with larger populations um, and more lenient legislation towards cannabis uh, will provide investors with the best return on investment. Now, a few other developments today. Green Thumb Industries to hold their first quarter 2021 earnings conference call on May 12th. I just thought this was ridiculously fast, but I'm not complaining. Pretty awesome to see Green Thumb Industries, a leading national cannabis consumer packaged goods company and owner of Rise Dispensaries today announced that it would hold a conference call on Wednesday, May 12th, 2021. Um, to release its first quarter 2021 financials after the market closed. So clearly Green Thumb Industries is very excited about their sales and they're like, no, yeah, let's get this information out there as quickly as possible, which I'm all for. I love to see this. Hopefully the other MSOs follow, but I this is something that was totally unexpected. Um, but again, yeah, very happy to see today. Now, uh, Alliance Global Partners increases Afria. So this is Afria on the NASDAQ in US dollars, their price target to $26 a share. So Afria had its target price increased by equities research analysts at Alliance Global Partners from $20 to $26 USD. In a report Thursday or issued on Thursday, the fly reports, the firm presently has a buy rating on the stock um, and they're anticipating the price target uh, may have potential upside of 60.59% from the company's current price, which would have been as of close this morning when the article was written. Um, so obviously we have not seen Afria start to trend up in the right direction, but mind you, it seems as if we've seen the bottom today. And as you know, as this comes out, some other companies or some other investment research firms might put their uh, analysts or their analysis out with their price targets. Uh, mind you, if we look at some others, Afria has been a topic of several other research reports. Cantor Fitzgerald raised their price targets on shares of Afria from 26 to 32.50 and gave the stock an overweight rating in a report on Tuesday, February 16th. BMO Capital Markets raised their target, their price shares from Afria from 7 to 15 and gave the stock. Uh, and this was on Friday, though. So obviously, price targets do not matter whatsoever, right? But if these in, if these investment groups have a lot of money, clearly, if they're putting out the price target that they think a company's worth there's no reason to expect that we might not end up tr trending in that direction. Again, I'm just pointing that out. Um, do not take that as, as fact or anything. Uh, we're just going to have to wait and see um, next week when Afria actually does release their earnings. But obviously, seeing a price target that's much higher than what it's trading at right now in US dollars, 
is great. So we can only hope that it might trend in that direction going forward. Now, uh, a few more things to announce. Tom Engel did mention that the Virginia House and Senate have both voted to approve Governor Ralph Northam's amendment to launch the legalization of cannabis this summer instead of 2024. Both chambers will vote again this afternoon to make it official, but this is happening. So I will update this on Sunday. It's likely to pass, um, but this will be the 17th state to legalize adult use cannabis, which is pretty fantastic. Now, um, another development, or hold on, let me just scroll up because I wanted to show you. So the Virginia House has just voted to approve the governor's amendment to speed up the legalization. The Senate will vote shortly. Stay tuned. Um, and yeah, so it's, that that's still ongoing and happening right now. So I'll come back with that on Sunday with some more information. Now, unfortunately, oh boy, Mexican senators have reportedly requested yet another cannabis legalization deadline extension from the Supreme Court. The current deadline at the end of April, but or the current deadline is April 30th from what I've mentioned in past videos, but senators say that the Chamber of Deputies inserted inconsistencies into the bill. So whatever that means, uh, I love this comment though. Manana, if you've ever been to Mexico or you know you travel down south, the, the the attitude is, oh, tomorrow, tomorrow, we'll get it done later. And I just want to point this out too, bureauc bureaucracy strikes again. If you've been investing in this industry for a long time, you have to have patience of steel because as much as they want to push this off and delay, it is going to happen. Um, and we're already April 8th, April 30th is not that far away. So just keep breathing, <laughs> take deep breaths, keep calm. Um, this is going to pass, especially because the Supreme Court is pretty much telling Mexico they have to do it. So that's positive. I just wanted to highlight that though, so that there's no surprises. Um, you know, we, we get enough of that being investors in this industry. But I did also want to show this um, interview that Boris Jordan did with Bloomberg because he's confident as well that cannabis is going to be as large as I believe it is. I mean, I don't know how big it's going to be. I can't even imagine probably, but I do think it's going to be the next health and wellness trend. So let's hear him chat um, and provide some insight about Europe that I hadn't considered previously before. When New Jersey voted in November, I said to everybody, I think this is a domino effect from here on. And that's what's happened. And it's happened to be honest, faster than we thought. So definitely the, the major growth is in the United States and Curly's major focus is continues to be the US, but Europe is not far behind. Europe is where we were in 2017. And, you know, Curly from 2017 till now grew from, you know, 17 million of revenues to over a billion dollars of revenue. So yeah. I, I think that's where Europe is today. And, and, and Curly decided to put its footprint uh, to move our brands into Europe. and and we bought the largest operator in Europe, and, and we also raised $130 million of financing in order to finance that build-out. So we're very excited about the European operation. And the big differentiation between Europe and the US is that Europe is a capital light model. Europe is, it's legal. The medical business in Europe is absolutely you know, legal yeah. in the EU. And so we don't have to build these operations in every single country. We can build a centralized operation in Portugal and Spain, which is where we are, and then distribute it through all of Europe. Fair points. Now, I do want to point out, though, he says from 2017 to now, that's still, you know, from 2021 to 2024. That's a long ways away. So obviously, Cureleaf is one of the, has the largest foothold in the U.S. Um, mind you, it appears that going forward, Cureleaf or Afria and Tilray seem to be the companies with the largest already established footprint in Europe, and they will benefit from that most, the most, as soon as Europe actually does start to um, you know, become more friendly towards medical cannabis uh, and they accelerate those markets. But so, yeah, I just want to point out, although he's confident in saying that as investors, be patient because obviously he's optimistic and he's saying what he thinks is going to happen as soon as possible. But in real life, things take a lot longer, as you can see with Mexico, as you can see with states, as you can see with politicians promising things that they don't deliver on, you know, so just keep that in mind. Uh, but I wanted to provide this update for you all every day or <laughs> sorry. I wanted to provide this update for you all, everyone. Um, so thank you so much for tuning in if you did. And again, I hope you found this helpful and educational as I wanna help you become better investors and think big picture uh, and improve your ability to connect the dots uh, and focus on the fundamentals and what's happening on the ground so that you can make better investment decisions for the long run. So thank you all so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on it as it really helps out my channel. Subscribe if you don't wanna miss any new videos and I will catch you on Sunday for This Week in Cannabis. Have a great day, everybody.